So, what's going on guys, KS here, welcome back to a brand new video, and today I will show you how to never die in corrupted dungeons. At the start, we'll go into the whole overview of the corrupted dungeons, what they are, how to enter, what are the requirements and basically everything in depth. Then I will show you two specific builds, one which is super good for mobility and another one which is super good for PvE, so basically killing the small mobs and the big boss. By the way guys, a quick disclaimer that both these builds are super cheap and have no artifacts whatsoever. And all the gameplay that you see on the screen, which is infamy and fame farming, are done with zero specs and zero levels whatsoever. So, after I have shown you the right gear, all the right spells that you need to use, we will go in both weapon playstyles. After that is done, I will look into the best clearing routes, then how to kill the best boss fight and as fast as possible. And last but not the least, I'll sum it up and give you my final thoughts on the corrupted dungeons itself, what PvP and PvE looks like, is it super good for fame farming as a solo player? how much money you can make and much more. So if you're instead to make bunch of money, bunch of fame, you want to know the best strategy and use the best builds possible, then let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, what are the corrupt dungeons or where you can find them? In general, there are three corrupted dungeon levels. The first one is hunter level, which will basically give you super low rewards. Whenever you see a player and fight him, whoever dies gets knocked down and doesn't lose any loot whatsoever. The item power and the gear that you need to use is super low, so obviously the fame and everything else is super low as well. For 99% of the players, I for sure don't recommend this level, but by any chance if you're a super new player, then I would recommend to just play one or two matches. All that you have to do to find corrupted dungeons and enter the hunter's level is to find any yellow zone, run around the map and you'll probably see a small dungeon with a red symbol. Then with that said, moving over to the second level, which is called the stalker, so this is the level where about 99% of the players will be playing at least the first 30 days after this new game mode. The rules are super simple, everything is full loot, so if you die you lose all of your gear. The minimum item power is 900, but from my experience I definitely recommend to have at least 950 or 1000 item power. The loot and fame will be definitely better than the hunter's level, so this is the one that you will definitely want to play all over again many times. And last but not the least is the third level which is called the slayer. For this one you have to have 50,000 infamy, which you'll have to cure after running stalker level for many more dungeons. So for slayer 1 you have to have 1200 item power, which means that you'll need super good gear, but as well you'll get super good loot and super good fame. But to find and enter the stalkers and slayers levels, all that you have to do is go into any of the red or black zones, do the same thing, just run around the map, and you'll probably find a dungeon with a red symbol. These small red dungeons will never show on the minimap, but for me personally, I have seen at least 6 to 8 dungeons per every map. Then as for the corrupted dungeons rules, everything is super straightforward. Whenever you enter the dungeon, you will spawn in one of the random locations and you will get a map which every single dungeon will change. So all you have to do is kill mobs, each mob will either way give you 15, 25, 50, 100 and so on and so forth infamy. Whenever you reach 500, other players cannot attack you. So all you have to do is kill the boss and go to the next dungeon. As well later in the video I'll tell you all the specifics and more in depth guide about everything else. Ok so with that said moving over to the first build which is a guardian's helmet, mercenary jacket, hunter shoes, blood letter, torch and a limhurst cape. Ok so maybe you're asking yourself why I chose this build specifically. First things first blood letter is one of the best weapons for mobility in the game itself. All of this gear should relatively be super cheap. The only artifact we have is the blood letter itself. Mainly I'm using a 6.1 gear, but if you're a super beginner you can use a flat 5 or maybe flat 6 gear. The main objectives and the main things are that you never die with this gear, so you can just buy it and you'll never lose it. If you ever need money or just get bored of it, you just resell it and buy something else. As for the gear, I went with the guardian's helmet. For ability I picked the emergency heal and for the passive I picked toughness. This helmet is super good, you get extra defense and on top of all of that you get ability that every 30 seconds you can get about 200-300 health and if I wouldn't have 0 spec I'll probably get 400 or even 500 health. Getting that every 30 seconds is super good and super useful. Then for the chest piece I went with the mercenary jacket. For the items ability I picked the bloodlust. Every time I hit anyone with a spell or just a normal attack I get 47 health and it lasts for 8 seconds. Then for the passive I picked swiftness. Then moving over to the hunter shoes. For the item spells I picked the refreshing sprint. 
this build is 50% made for just fan farming and 50% to PvP in future. So leather boots in general are super good if you don't even want to use hunter shoes you can use assassins but to catch up to players or run away from them in my opinion these ones are the best. Then for the passive again I went with swiftness. Moving over to our weapon which is the bloodletter. For first spell which is Q I went with the deadly swipe. For W I went with the chain slash. The E is obviously lunging stab which you cannot change. And for the passive I went with the life leech. Then for my offhand I went with the torch. You could use an artifact like a taproot or something more expensive but I wanted to cheap out. And like extra 5 to 10% to your health or attack speed isn't that much so I just went with the normal torch. Then last but not the least I went with the limbhurst cape which activates whenever you drop below 40% energy. It will restore you 8% energy which will last for 10 seconds. As for the food I went with the stew so I would get extra damage and last but not least for my potions I went with the invisibility. You only want to use it whenever you see a player or mobs and you need to escape then you just pop it, you become invisible and then you run away. Ok so for the whole summary of this build I picked every single weapon because it's super good it will give you self heal, you will never run out of mana and most of the time you'll never drop about 50% below your health. Ok so for the clearing strategy it's super simple. You try to fight at least 2-3 mobs at every single time. You press your Q's and W as an AoE. And whenever all the mobs get below 40% you just click E and finish them off. This playstyle is super simple, super fun. Remember that you can use your Q and W not only to attack mobs but to run away from spells. Especially when fighting a final boss. Then moving over to the second build which is a great axe. So for the gear itself we have a guardian's helmet, mercenary jacket. Soldier boots, great tax, and last but not the least, Limhurst cape. This is the same helmet like in previous build, so again you use the emergency heal and toughness for the passive. The same thing applies for the chest piece, which is the mercenary jacket. Again you pick the bloodlust and balance mind for the passive. But then for the boots we have something else which are the soldier boots. This great axe build doesn't have any mobility whatsoever except the soldier boots. So that's why I picked them because you get the wanderlust ability, which is the best ability for movement and to run away from someone as fast as possible. The main point of this build is to try to farm as much as you can. Whenever you get invaded and find players in your own dungeon, you just destroy crystals and use the wanderlust boots to run away from them. And of course for the passive you go with toughness. Last but not least for the great axe itself, as for the Q ability you go with the rending swing, W is the deadly chop, then for the E which obviously you cannot change is the worldwind, and for the passive you go with the life leech. Then again you do the same things, you use the Limhurst cape for energy, you keep on using Stu every 30 minutes and just in case you get invisibility potions if you're super in trouble and need to escape someone. Ok so this build specifically is a lot different from the bloodletter itself, you don't have mobility that much so whenever you see a red ability coming at you you need to start moving. The soldier boots in general are super good because whenever you are in trouble you can just pop them and escape the damage that is coming to your way. Then for the playstyle again you want to fight at least 2-3 mobs every single time. Your W is a single target shot so just use it on the biggest mob which has more health and the rest of the time keep on pressing Q to deal damage to all the mobs and whenever you have your R and E ability available click R and then E so that ability combo will activate 2 spells at one time. The first ability will give you health for every single hit and the other one will do a AOE damage and combine them you can do a bunch of damage and as well get full health again. It's super good and super useful and you can see the examples from the gameplay itself. Ok so now it's your choice you can either way pick the blood letter which is mainly made for actually fighting someone in the future whenever you get enough fame and enough spec. And the second build is purely made for fame farming trying to get as much silver and loot as you can. Both builds should be almost the same expense, maybe the great tax one is a bit cheaper, but pick whatever playstyle you want to play and pick one of those two builds. As for the best clearing routes, as I previously mentioned that every single time you get into the corrupted dungeon the map itself and the layout will change. As well sometimes you'll be spawned on top of the left, sometimes on the bottom right or any other different location. I have run about 20 to 30 this type of different dungeon runs and I have found out that there isn't best way to just go to the bosses or only try to kill small mobs. Usually the difference between both of them is about 20 seconds. So for me personally the way that I do it, wherever I get spawned I always clear the right side. I keep on killing the small mobs and the big ones as well. I don't care much about the silver or the chests but if they are on my way I open them. If not I'll just leave them and go to the next boss or mob I need to kill. So you keep on fame farming and keep on clearing the whole right side till you get 500 infamy and then you just go back or straight away to the middle boss.
Okay, so in general, every single corrupted dungeon has both four bosses. There is one main boss and three small bosses. As for killing the small ones, they will still do a bunch of damage, but most of them they should be easy enough to kill. The main abilities that you need to watch out for, for the small bosses, is that especially with a great axe whenever you see a red square, or a red circle which indicates that a spell is coming which will damage you, without hitting anything, you want to start moving straight away. As for the blood letter, it's super simple. Again, whenever you see the same thing, you just dash away. So by pressing Q, W or even E. You have three different mobilities, so you should definitely never get hit by any AoEs. The things to watch out for is the moving AoE, which whenever you move will be moving onto you as well. And last but not the least, whenever the small bosses get a shield, all that you need to do is just auto attack them and don't use any of your abilities. While they're having that shield, you'll do zero damage, so it's pointless to do anything at that point. The first and the second time, when I tried out the medium bosses, they were kind of hard, but the third and fourth time, they were super easy, and if you keep on doing the things that I told you, killing the mini bosses shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. Then last but not the least, for the big boss, if you're a blood letter, you just go straight away, but if you're using the second build, which is the great axe, before fighting, you want to change your Q, to the first one which is a single target and you want to change your soldier boots from wanderlust instead to the other one so by switching these two abilities before the big boss fight for your q it will add like extra 30 damage and as the big boss has an ability to slow you down and trap you having an ability which will give you 200 speed boost for two three seconds is definitely must have so as a blood letter you keep on pressing q and w and escaping all red AOBs that boss does. As this one will have a bunch of health, you don't have to wait only to 40% to press your E as well. Whenever you get it from the ability, you just press it again and keep on doing that till he's dead. But then as a great axe, it will be a bit harder. As you don't have any mobility, the boots are the only thing that you need to save up. So again, keep on pressing Q and W's on the boss as well. As your E ability, which is the spinning one, is 30 seconds instead of 60 which I previously told you that you need to keep on doing, to so press R and then E. For the big boss, you can do the same thing as well, but whenever your R ability is down to 30 seconds and you have your E up, you don't have to wait, so just use it again. And whenever both of them are up, use both of them again. Then when one is down, one is up, use that one and so on and so forth. Obviously for both builds, keep on using the D ability, which will give you health. And last but not the least for the Great Axe, whenever you get stuck in one of the AoE abilities, then that is the only time when you should press F ability, which will give you the boost. You want to save it as much as you can, because it doesn't do any damage and it barely regenerates your health. So when you are in a bad situation, that is the only place you want to use it. If you know that you can just by yourself run out, keep it and save it for the next time. Then as for the abilities go, whenever the boss is restoring his mana, that's the best time to press all of your abilities, because at that point he's a stationary target, which is doing no damage whatsoever, so you can use it all that you have. The boss abilities in general aren't super hard, you just have to keep on moving, trying to get some auto hits whenever you can, but most of the time just keep on moving, get as many hits and many abilities as you can at one time, but never stay as a stationary target for too long. So, by now the deed is done, the boss is killed, and your next question is, should I complete the whole dungeon itself or go to the next one? I tested both methods out, and these are the things that I came up with. Everything depends on what is your main objective. If you purely want to fame farm and try to get as much infamy as possible, then the best way to do it is to clear out the whole dungeon, so that means all the small and big bosses, and then whenever you don't see any red dots and the whole dungeon is clear, then you can move to the next one. But if you're purely fame farming but you want to get an extra loot and you want to get as much silver as possible then all you have to do is after killing the middle boss go to the next dungeon get 500 infamy kill the middle boss go to the next dungeon so on and so forth the more dungeons you'll do the better loot and more money you will make in the progress the difference itself is super small like 10 percent so instead of doing like two dungeons where you only get 500 infamy and kill two middle bosses or on the other hand just kill one middle boss and clear out one whole dungeon i did both of them for like 30 minutes and i found out about five percent difference in infamy but a lot more loot and a lot more silver by just getting enough infamy killing the middle boss and then moving to the next dungeon Okay, so we have covered what are the best builds, what are two playstyles for both of the weapons, what is the best way to clear out mobs, what are the strategies and everything else. As for the things that you need to do when you actually see a player, which is trying to invade your dungeon, it's super simple. Your whole screen will flash red and you'll get a pop-up message that someone is sensing an evil presence in your dungeon. So then on your minimap, you'll see a bunch of huge crystals. All that you have to do is use your boots ability without killing any mobs whatsoever, moving to the crystals, destroying them with just three simple normal attacks. And whenever three of the crystals are destroyed, you'll be safe 
and no one will be able to attack you for that whole dungeon. Both these builds are specifically made so other players won't be able to catch you and you'll have enough time and health to kill the three crystals and protect yourself. And with that said, now we have come to the last part which is the final thoughts. Both the builds are specifically made to be super cheap and super useful and at least if you use my methods and try out my tactics you should never use a single silver. A big thing is to keep on using your food every 30 minutes which will give you like 10% damage or even more costs about 3000 and you can definitely make 20 times more of that in just 30 minutes. Keep on remembering that at the start maybe you'll get super bad loot and super bad fame but the more infamy you get the more loot, better equipment and more fame you'll get in the future as well. Whenever you're getting invaded try to run to crystal straight away and never kill or hit any mob whatsoever. If you do that you'll show up on the minimap and you definitely want to stay away from that. Even the Great Axe build which has almost no mobility whatsoever but is super good for PvE, most time will no one will be able to catch you because 99% of the players are looking for PvP and they have only damage and heal abilities. No one goes into these dungeons with a ganking build so for any players to die by using these builds and strategy should be a miracle. As a final thought, these dungeons are super good and super useful, especially for a solo player and if you are a beginner, to just try out some different weapons and try to make as much fame and money as possible. For the blood letter build especially, if you get bored from just fame farming, you have to remember that you can do PvP as well, so if you get good enough spec and fame and even tier 8 gear, you can start fame farming and start killing players. Both these builds are super viable and if you get bored from one thing, you can go to another one. As for a PvP player, these dungeons are definitely not the most fun thing. Yes, you can get 1v1 fights, but like I have shown you in this video, it's super simple to escape someone and just keep on fame farming and making money with zero risk whatsoever. So if any Albion Online developers are watching this video, I would recommend for sure to add health to crystals and make that if you destroy 3 crystals and you're protecting your own life by banishing the other player, you lose like about 5% infamy or something like that. As well the same thing applies if you die from a PvP, everyone loses 20% of the infamy they already have and in my opinion it's super bad and super discouraging for all the PvP players who want to get on top of the leaderboards or just PvP in general. So I would recommend instead of 20% have 10% and if any player decides to run away and destroy the crystals he should be punished as well from the infamy. And with that said that's about it. I really do appreciate for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. This is my second channel where I'll be making a bunch of Albion online content. So let me know what video ideas or any suggestions you have for me. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, subscribe and enable that notification bell to not miss any more amazing top 10 lists, beginner guides, PvP videos or anything else. From me that's it, appreciate it for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it. My name is Kate, you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, peace.